Good morning from the morgue. I'm Dr. Wolf. I'm a medical examiner, and I just thought you might be interested to see my setup for today's case. So let's have a look. So before I tell you much about the case, I'm gonna show you the setup and let you think about what it might be about, okay? So um, we always have to have something to measure with. This is six inches or 15 centimeters. We take lots of measurements like the thickness of the interventricular septum of the heart, the thickness of the left ventricular free wall, um, various measurements of pathologic and anatomical uh, structures within the body. I have a scalpel bladed with a 22 blade scalpel. That's a pretty typical scalpel for what I'm gonna to use today. A small pair of forceps, a small pair of scissors, and a hemostat. In addition, I have a small sewing needle, and of course, here's the thread we sew with. Okay, so having seen the setup, can you think about what kind of case it is? The instruments are all very small, so if you guessed that this was an infant slash fetal case, you would be correct. And the reason why I'm showing you this and talking about this is because um, a lot of people say they want to become medical examiner, forensic pathologists, and they're mostly thinking about cool, true crime cases and murder cases, things like that. Um, but the truth is we also have to do pediatric cases and that includes babies and that includes fetuses. Um, we have to determine the cause of death for these, uh, these young human beings because they can't speak for themselves. And a lot of times the uh, cause of death for these little ones is internal. We find an infection or something in the lungs. And so, um, you know, a lot of times this is a deal breaker for people who want to go into forensics. Um, I personally... Uh, find it to be a very interesting field. I enjoy these cases, but I don't enjoy, of course, that children, fetuses, infants have passed. I don't, I don't like that they've died, but somebody has to give closure. And that's the whole point of what we do as the forensic pathologist in this case, or uh, you don't even necessarily have to be forensic. The hospital uh, uh, pathologist can do autopsies as well. And the idea here is that you have a grieving family and they need answers um, for closure. And sometimes those answers not only can help them bring about closure in this very um, sad and uh, upsetting time, but also we can find answers that they can use going forward as they uh, decide to have more children or not. For instance, one of the things we will look for in some cases is genetic diseases. If we can identify a genetic disease through the autopsy procedure and sending off for genetic studies, then that family can be counseled about what kind of genetic disease might be present and let them make their own informed consent and their own decision on what to do going forward in terms of having children. Um, I'll say that, and this is an unofficial statistic, but for all the pediatric and fetal autopsies I do, I, sh I shouldn't say pediatric, I should say just fetal. So like stillbirths or um, babies that are born very prematurely. Uh, sometimes it is difficult to find a cause of death. Um, you know, somewhere in that 30 to 40% range, we might find an actual cause and that would be something like a neonatal pneumonia or an intracranial hemorrhage, something like that. Uh, so. You know, it's not always a slam dunk, but it can be helpful. And we also have to put together with the fetal findings, we have to put together the maternal findings because sometimes fetuses will die in utero, but the cause is within the placenta or the cause is due to the health of the mother. Uh, something that's going on like preeclampsia or gestational diabetes or perhaps even an infection. Um, you know, in, in past years, long before uh, the age of routine vaccination, things like congenital rubella could cause death. And then there are other infections like cytomegalovirus and things like that. So uh, there, there's a very broad differential diagnosis when you have an intrauterine fetal demise. And uh, these cases are challenging because they are very small and the anatomy is much smaller. But uh, it's important that we do these because we're just trying to help the family. And I, I want you to consider if you're watching this 
um, as a person thinking about going into forensics, that is a part of the field that you have to do. Um, and for some, it is a deal breaker. Um, but I, I kind of feel like it's a, somewhat of an honor to use the knowledge that we have of, of these cases, of, of the long history of doing pediatric autopsies and trying to help these grieving families. Uh, so if you have any questions about my setup uh, or about uh, the things that I've said here, please let me know and I will answer you in the comments. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel uh, I am going to use this as more of a um, central hub for my content, YouTube. And um, so consider subscribing, consider telling your friends, sending the video to people, and um, you know, clicking that little bell for the notification so that when I do put a video up, you can instantly get a notification for that and watch it. So uh, thank you again. I'm Dr. Wolf, a forensic pathologist, medical examiner.